The purpose of this tutorial is to help you with electric charge distribution diagrams. Basically, we're trying to figure out where do charges go when they move between one or more objects. To help you with this, there's a four step approach that I think you should consider. The first thing you want to do is define your system. It seems silly, but you have to know what you're analyzing. Step two is figure out the net charge. So what's the total charge of your whole system? Step three, think about if the charges are mobile. Um, so basically, is the object a conductor or is part of it conductor, part of it insulator? We know that charges will move through conductors, but not through insulators. And then last but not least, figure out the actual configuration. This is the step the students usually have the hardest part with. But I think you'll see that if you do the first three things carefully, it becomes a lot easier to figure out the actual configuration. Okay, so let's try an actual example. Let's say we have a large conducting metal pi tin that's held up with a insulating plastic stand. And let's say it has a charge of XS plus two. And then we have a little pi tin that's minus eight. And it is also held up with a insulating plastic stand. And we wanna know what would happen to these two pi tins when we bring them in contact. Okay, so let's try to apply the four-step process to figure out what's going on here. So first, what is our system? What are we analyzing here? Well, we're interested in both of the pi tens, and eventually they come in contact. So the system is both pi tens. Next step, please figure out what is the net charge of the two pi ten system. Well, the pi 10 on the left is plus 2, and the one on the right is minus 8. So there's 6 more excess negative charges overall than there is positive. So overall, we're looking at something that is minus 6. Next, please think about, are the charges mobile? This one is tricky because, um, and I think most people would say the charges are mobile, and that is true for the pi 10s, but keep in mind they can't move throughout the handles. So, um, the charges are not mobile there and the handles are just going to stay neutral. And then last but not least, we want to figure out the configuration of the charges and this is probably the hardest part. So the first thing I would recommend is let's just draw the charges in as they started at the instant before they touched. Okay, and we know the charges can move through the metal pi tin and we also know that opposite charges attract. And so it seems like some of these negative charges might pull over or be, um, be attracted over to that positive charge, and that certainly does happen. One thing that I see students do is they draw their charge distribution to look like this. You can see here that I've moved one of the negative charges that was over here right next to the excess positive charge over here, and that does make sense because the opposite charges attract. However, it's really important to remember what the sign, what do these charges mean in this class? And they mean ex, ex, excess charge. So a negative sign means there's more negatives than positives in that region, and a positive means there's more positives than negatives. So you really can't leave it like this right now. It, it doesn't make any sense. You're saying there's more negatives than positives at that spot, and you're also saying there's more positives than negatives can't have more of you can't have excess of both charge that's a contradiction so what really happens is it just cancel out there isn't any more excess negatives there and there isn't any more excess positives and likewise one of these negatives over here is going to attract to this positive over here and they can both move and they're going to just cancel out and so this is what we've got right now. Notice, and this is important, that we have minus 6 extra overall, which agrees with what we said before, is that the overall charge of the whole thing is negative 6. So the next step is to figure out what happens to those negative charges. Well, we know that like charges repel, and so things that are repelling are going to end up as far away from each other as possible. So when you're drawing these diagrams, you want to think about how stable it is and it is not stable to leave things that are 
next to each other that are repelling and are able to move, they're, they're going to spread out. That's much more stable. And so what's the most spread out it could be? I'm going to argue that the most spread out it can be is something like this. You can see each negative charge is pretty far away from all the rest of them. Also, there's a lot more extra negatives in the left pi 10 than the right. And why is that? Well, the left pi 10 is a lot bigger, so they have a lot more space to spread out in. You could think of this kind of like it's analogous to people that are disliking each other strongly. If you have two rooms, which is like analogous to the big pi 10 and the little one, more of the people are going to spread out into the bigger room just because there's more room to spread out. And then last, just as a, a gut check to make sure this, this makes sense, you look at the overall net charge and you can see that we still have minus 6, just like we started with. So this is our final electric charge distribution. Okay, so let's try another example and see how well you do with it. So in this situation, we have two uh, pi tins again. They're conductors, and they're also held up with insulating stands. The one on the left is plus 2, and the one on the right is minus 2. We're trying to figure out uh, what would the charges distribution look like on the two together. Please remember, try to apply this four-step approach. I think it'll help you. And so please give it a shot. What would the final distribution look like? Okay, well, to go through this step, the steps in this, the system is clearly the two pi tens. The net charge is zero because we have plus two on the left and minus two on the right. The charges are mobile in the pi tens, but not in the handles. And so final configuration, both of these things are just neutral because the excess positive is going to cancel out the excess negative. And likewise for that, you can see the overall charge of the whole thing is zero. Uh, and so it's just going to stay like this. Remember, for neutral charges, you don't have to draw any charges. And so this right here is our final charge distribution. You don't have to draw anything. Okay, let's try one more, a little bit harder question. Let's say we have two electroscopes. And the first one has a charge of plus six. We have another identical electroscope. And its leaves are much farther apart because it has a charge of minus 16. And the question is, if we connect a wire between the metal spheres at the top, what would the final charges on the electroscopes look like? And part of this question, draw the leaves. So think about what would happen to the leaves when you put a wire between it connecting it. Remember, try to follow those four steps. Let's see what you can do. All right, so the system here is, is pretty clearly the both of the electroscopes together because we're trying to figure out what happens to both of them. The net charge of the whole system is minus 10 because we have plus 6 on the left electroscope and we have minus 16 on the right. So overall, this thing is minus 10. 10 more excess negatives than positives. Are the charges mobile? Yes, they are. So the, the head of the electroscope and the stand and leaves all of its metal so it is all conducting so charges can move around everywhere and then we got to figure out the configuration of the whole thing so just like we saw in previous examples excess positive charges are going to attract to excess negative charges they're going to move on top of each other and they're just going to cancel out and be neutral and so we, we we know we're left with at the end of the day minus 10 so 10 extra negatives and the electroscopes are identical and so half of those 10 are going to hang out on the left one and half are going to hang out on the right. And so we know that it's going to be minus 5 and minus 5 ex excess charge on the two electroscopes when it's all said and done. And so let's go ahead and put those charges on the electroscopes.
And those charges are going to spread out across their respective electroscopes as, as far as possible because the excess negative charges repel the other excess negative charges. And one tricky thing about this question is that the leaves in the two electroscopes should be more hanging hanging spread out a little bit. So they're not hanging straight down because this negative and this negative are repelling each other, but not quite as much as this, uh, certainly the one on the right in the original situation and, and even the one on the left, because this one has a greater net charge. So this one when it was originally plus six, while this one is only minus five in the end. So the leaves would not be quite as far apart. I guess it would be pretty close, but this one certainly, the leaves need to be a lot more spread apart than the one on the right after the pulse and gun because the excess charge is a lot less. So there's less charges in the leaves and there's less repelling. If you look at the whole system, you can see that we still have the same net charge. It's still minus 10 for the whole thing. The charges are as spread out as they possibly could be, which makes sense since they're like charges which are repelling. And this is as stable as it's going to get. So there's no charge distribution you could draw that is is better or is I guess more stable. I hope this tutorial helps. If you have questions, please see your instructor.